right, hello everyone. Come on in, thanks for coming by. We're gonna have another great uh, video here. We're gonna get excited about watercolors. We're gonna have a real f interesting time of seeing how we can really uh, focus in on getting really pure, beautiful colors onto our paper, onto our watercolor paper and our paintings um, by just some couple simple steps that we can do that some, some of you may not uh, uh, know about um, some of you that are new here to my channel you might not have seen me do a video on this I sometimes cover this and I believe I have a couple videos on this that go back a couple years ago but I like to just every once in a while do a video for everyone that's kind of new joining along here you might be just starting out watercolors you might have you might be painting a couple years you might even be an old pro but you're used to doing things differently whatever it is doesn't matter we're just gonna all learn here the uh, methods and techniques of watercolor step by step and uh, have a good time of it, have fun with it. Um, we'll save our uh, compositions so when we're doing some lessons here and some uh, compositions we'll save them, put them in a little folder next to our art table wherever you work uh, in a folder in a drawer nearby where you're uh, uh, creating your paintings if you um, have a little spot in your house um, or your home, your apartment where you like to keep your art supplies, you might keep a little folder and you, you save these uh, exercises that we do here so you can refer to them in the future because it'll, it'll really be helpful. And um, I also too ask you please subscribe. There's a red button right on the right hand side below this uh, screen. Uh, if you click on subscribe, this way you can get my videos each week as they come out and you'll learn new things as well as you'll keep seeing the same uh, techniques and methods over and over so you'll get used to them and you'll start to really get familiar with them and really make them part of your watercolor process when you're painting which will uh, really I think help you to become a better watercolor artist so let's get right into the lesson here so what we're going to do is I'm going to just show how I work with my water container so I always have a water container with clean water this is a larger collapsible plastic water container and I've got fresh clean water in there and um, I keep that to the right and then here I have a sponge a small sponge I cut a sponge in half actually like a dish like a um, kitchen sponge I, I cut this in half just to make it a little smaller and I put this next to my water container sometimes I have a tissue next to that here so this is another way you can take a little bit of water off your paintbrush and then here is a paper towel you can use a paper towel as well I also use my apron so I always usually work with an apron so I have my apron and I usually tap my brush on my apron uh, you know to uh, take a little bit of water off the brush but that's the main thing here we're going to cover is checking off water uh, off your brush hairs when you're painting because a lot of times I notice artists as well as myself when I first started and many new artists that come into watercolors they tend to have an issue sometimes with too much water in their brush and that can really really uh, cause problems with your paintings so let's show you how uh, being really careful with your uh, water the amount of water and paint in your your brush will actually really can enhance your watercolors so let's, let's get started here now we're just going to do some simple color swatches on this page we're not going to do any fancy painting right now this is just to kind of cover the um, water to paint ratio in your brush so that you can get really exciting colors as well as if you want to have a really light wash you'll know exactly how to do it so this is something you'll definitely want to um, <clears throat> take notes on and um, again when you're done with your if you paint along with us here and you have some watercolor paper in your palette and your brush and your your uh, art supplies you can do this exercise two or three times and then you can put this in again a, a folder in your studio so this way you have that to uh, refer back to just in case you um, <clears throat> want to brush up on your notes okay so let's do it here basic thing is when you're painting you're gonna have your brush and you're gonna say alright I'm gonna start I'm gonna make a blue uh, swatch here so you'll go over you'll you'll swish around your brush in the water pail to clean off your brush maybe you had some other paint on there and so now you're you're always constantly going back to your water bucket so you're always going into your water bucket and cleaning your your brush constantly as you paint Let, let's can we all agree on that does that make sense we're always going into our water bucket constantly and and um, cleaning off the brush as we paint so as we do that 
we're just going to remember to rinse off the brush and then when we come back to get paint again in our palette we're going to actually stop quickly and just tap our brush on either your sponge or a paper towel you can or, or a, a tissue you can hold a tissue in your hand if you want and um, tap it on your tissue you have paper towel you could tap it on a paper towel if you want again I a lot of times tap my brush on my um, apron so I just tap a little bit on there and that checks off a little bit of water so that your brush is just a tiny bit uh, drier so it's not as much water in the brush but you don't want to take all the water out you just want to kind of take off a little bit so that it's not dripping off the water's not dripping off your brush then you can go in get your paint after you've checked off the water and you can get a great exciting dark like that with rich beautiful vibrant color is that exciting or what now if I had not checked off some of that water two things would have happened one I would have added a lot of water into the palette so all of a sudden I'd be getting puddles of water in my palette here and that's what we don't want we don't want to flood our palettes with water because we're not checking that water off the brush does that make sense so you want to keep your palette your paints in your palette pure just the way they are when you squeeze them out of the uh, tube and uh, I also have many if you want to type in just my name Chris C-H-R-I-S P-E-T-R-I and then type in uh, into the YouTube search bar Chris Petri palette you just type in the word palette along with my name and I've got about 10 videos on palettes so I, I explain a lot of things about what colors I use what palettes I use um, how I care for my palette how I keep the pa paints fresh all that kind of thing so but on this video we're just really concentrating on making sure we're focusing on focusing on how much water is in that brush hair in the brush hairs of our brush and that's why because if we have too much water in this and we're not taking some of that water off on either our paper towel tissue or sponge or apron we're gonna have very very um, washed out looking colors with not much pigment and vibrancy so let's let's recall that so now if you do want to make a lighter wash of this blue well then you could always go in add a little bit of paint to your palette and then maybe pick up a little bit of water check off a little water and you can make a lighter wash and then we could do that we could go next to this wash and say alright there we have it we have can you can you see that we've controlled our washes by how much water is in our brush so we have a really dark vibrant blue and then a light blue a nice powdery light blue we're using French ultramarine blue here so that's really important that's really the key thing so let's go with another color let's go with uh, cadmium red so I rinse off my brush now I have some blue paint on my brush I'm going over rinsing off the brush then I'm coming over and I'm tapping off some water off my brush on either the sponge again or whatever you want to use you can use any one of these or your apron or something else too um, but these are the main ones I think are the best you tap off that little bit of water then you go in and get your fresh cadmium red paint and we'll do it let's do a, a red Wow doesn't that look great and hey look how exciting that color is and again you can go lighter and make it a more softer looking wash but the way you're gonna get these vibrant rich exciting darker tonal values and richer looking colors is by checking that water off your brush before you go into your palette that's really the simple basics of it then I can rinse off my brush again and then I can check off some water then I can go in and get just a little bit of paint put it in the palette and you can see how red it's lighter now see that because I just picked up a little touch of paint and went into the palette with the water that was in the brush and there wasn't a lot of water in the brush again we checked some water off on this one too so we're checking water off the brush on both the light and the dark the only difference is we're picking up more paint to get the darker wash 
and we're picking up less paint and putting it in the palette, less paint and just using the water that's in the brush for our lighter tonal value like that. And then we can make, make it a little more interesting. We can get a little bit of uh, cadmium ye yellow. And so I just added some cadmium, cadmium yellow. Make this a little more interesting. You could take a little more red straight into the, kind of blend that in. So this is a really fantastic way to control your darks and your lights as you paint. Uh, and again, let's try it one more time. So we have some orange paint in our brush. Let's we'll clean up the powder a little bit. Let me get some paper towel. Give me one second. We'll just clean up our powder a little bit like that. And uh, let's rinse off the brush again. We're always rinsing off our brush. Does that make sense, everyone? You, As watercolor artists, we're constantly going back and rinsing our brush off all the time. Then when we come over, instead of going straight to the palette, we stop off and check off the water. Not all of the water, but some of it onto your choice. Let's go with some blue, some purple here. So I'll pick up some straight purple. Wow, look at that. Isn't that great? I could pick up a little bit more. So you can get those rich darks. It was beautiful, exciting, lots of paint. Then you, we can rinse off our brush, check a little bit of water off, get a little more purple, and then make a, we can make a little bit of a lighter wash right there with just a little bit of paint, just a touch of paint, and then whatever water's in the brush, and there we go. And then you can see how we can get a really beautiful dark and then fade it over to a really nice light wash like so. And that's really the basics of it. So I'm hoping you're enjoying this uh, video. Uh, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We do every kind of videos you can imagine, all watercolor. We'll do exercises like this occasionally. We'll also do flowers, landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes. We do um, figure painting, uh, portrait painting, so boats. We do, we do everything here, watercolor. And again, we're always doing the same methods and techniques over and over. So even, even if you don't like a certain subject matter, let's say you're not really too thrilled about boats, but even if you watch the video, you'll learn and keep seeing and hearing the same methods and techniques over and over again as you watch a video. You might not want to paint it, but you're watching it and you're going to see those techniques over and over again. It's going to get really clear in your mind the, te the techniques and methods you need to use to uh, create better paintings. So let's keep going here. Let's do one more. Again, we're rinsing off our brush. Rinsing off our brush and then we're tapping again. Tapping some of that water off, checking off, tapping off some of that water. Wherever you want it, you, you can use, again, a sponge, you can use tissue, paper towel. I use my uh, apron. And then let's get some green. Sap green, look at that, wow. Can you see that? Now, if I was not to check off any water, this would be all puddly and washed out like this. Let's try it. Let's check. Let's rinse our brush off and let's not take any water off the brush and let's go right over to the sap green and see what happens. See, it's not as dark. 
but if we use that method of checking off that water, you can really get those darks like that. And then let's go in, we'll get a little something different. Let's use uh, some chromium of oxide. Wow, beautiful. Rinse off the brush, check off some of the water. Let's go in and get some olive green. That's a little bit of a different green. It's a little bit warmer. Straight in to the paint. Rinse off the brush. Let's go in and get some viridian. Wow, look at that. And again, this is a little dry. Some of my Viridian is starting to dry here in my palette. So, I have to really work hard now on my Viridian Green to try to get the dark tonal value, but I can do it. I just had to work at it a little bit there and keep trying to mix around and get some really dark, dark paint. And there we go. So you can see how drying off the brush, rinse off the brush, dry off the brush a little. And there we have it. Then we can dry, we can rinse off the brush again, dry off the brush, and then just use whatever paints on the paper and we can thin that out. So you can thin out your paint a little bit. You can take some of your paint from here and move it over this way and get a little bit of your lighter wash here like that. And you'll have that. And let's see, maybe we'll do some alizarin crimson. We'll do some red here, lizard and crimson. Rinse off the brush, check some water off. Wow, look at that dark tonal value, beautiful. And let's use some rose matter. More of a transparent red. Beautiful for flowers that more of a pinkish red, rose matter, and then I just went in and got some water. So you can see how we have controlled our water and paint in our brush, in the hairs of our brush. We've controlled the water and paint ratios so that we can control at all times our darks and lights with any color. So any color you can work in your palette <clears throat> that you want to put into your paintings, um, you can do that by just taking a little bit of water each time off your brush before you go into your palette to get your paint. So you're again it's just rinsing off brush, checking off water, and then going into the palette. And if, if we're doing that and really keeping a good, a good keen awareness of um, the amount of water and paint in our brush, your paintings, you're going to have a whole new exciting look to your paintings because you're going to have these darks and lights in your paintings. I know when I first started watercolor paintings, I was doing more of all the light washes here because I really wasn't focusing in on my brush hairs and how much water was in my brush. So I was constantly... My, my palette was constantly looking like, like this with tons of water in it all the time, like this. So if you see your palette is like got all this kind of, constantly all this tons of water, th that you're not going to be able to get these really dark and light tonal values within your color ranges, whatever color you're using. Sometimes you will want to have this much water 
don't get me wrong, yes, you will have some water like this sometimes. If you're doing a, a really light sky wash, you might want to mix a lot of water. But a lot of times, too, you're not looking to have that much water for the rest of your painting. Maybe your sky wash, yes, you need lots of water for your sky wash, or maybe some water that you're painting in a painting, or a very light area of your painting, let's say. But just as much, it's much, you know, just as just the same, you're always going to want to have areas of your palette where you're going to have very little water. So your, your palette's going to look like this. See how those are rich darks like that? So what I'm saying is when you're doing very light washes, yes, your, your palette will look like this sometimes with lots of water. But a lot of times you're going to have your palette should be looking like this with straight color and not a lot of water so that there isn't all kinds of water dripping everywhere like this. You're going to want your palette looking like this. So you're just mixing up a little bit of green for maybe some uh, greens in your painting, like some bushes, some trees, some plants, you know, maybe a flower painting. You're going to want just a dry brush, which is rinse the brush, dry off the brush, go in, grab your paint, put it on, and there you have a beautiful, rich, dark green like this or like this or like this to get those darker tonal values. Okay, I hope you really learned a lot on this video. It's a really exciting technique and method to have this under control with your paintings and your technique. If you can really get this knowledge and make sure you practice this a lot so that you always are painting in this way where you're, again, checking off water as you're working so that you're not flooding out your palette with too much water, you're going to have a great time of getting some really exciting looking watercolors. And I, I hope you'll uh, keep this in mind, save these for your notes in your studio, and we'll see you on the next video. And again, thanks so much. Thanks for all the great comments, everybody. Appreciate it very much. Um, and uh, again, f feel free, comments, questions, whatever it is in the comments section here. I'll be happy to answer any questions, any comments. And again, thanks so much for always being encouraging and all the well wishes. And it gets me excited. I'll be back soon for more watercolor exciting videos. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.